Small garden at Homemakers, 10th of April. No dig garden, 25 square meters, three beds, roughly quarter blocks in each. So 12 different plantings, see what you can grow. A lot of what's growing here has already been sown in the greenhouse or on the windowsill of the house under cover from mid-February and transplanted here about a month ago on average. One or two things have overwintered like the spring onions there for example, they were sown, we multi sowed them modules last September, transplant mid-October under tomatoes actually but just finishing and so they've been out here all winter doing their thing without any protection and you can see there's a nice red one there actually, Lilla, L-I-L-L-A. That's the stand of White Lisbon here. And then next to them we have beetroot, also multi sow So multi sowing is great because you can have a few plants in a clump all growing together. They like that. They like being with their friends when they're quite small. And then with the spring onions, for example, you can twist out the larger ones like that. I could give it a wiggle. And there's a spring onion. Give it a little peel. And actually you've got a really nice spring onion. You know, who would not want to eat that spring onion? So that way you can, the others can then carry on growing in the little clumps. You get many harvests over a long period from one planting. It's a bit of a myth. Some people say you've got to have so every two weeks, you know, to have repeat harvests. Actually, if you look after what you've got, you can come back time and again and you don't have to do so many sowing. So all about time saving. And similar with the lettuce. So these were sown February, planted March and just, just getting going, basically. I can almost give you a demo here, you know, the way you twist off a lower leaf like that that's how we pick them and that leaves the heart leaves which should in, ensure that you get lots of new growth very quickly without having to keep re-sowing and here under please follow my feet we have some multi-sown radish we're under coriander actually <laughs> coriander cruiser it's a very tough variety and that that stood the winter from a uh, sowing in late july Okay. And these, look at these radish. So these are multi sown radish. There are actually four in that clump, which is what we hope for. And, and a little slug hole. <laughs> Genuine organic quality, that's, that's a slug hole. Which is absolutely no worry at all for a home grown radish. You know, you just take that in your stride, so to speak. But that, that's a variety called Rudy, R U D I, uh, which I find really good because it carries on growing, stays firm, doesn't go soft. And that's about eight and a half weeks now since they were sown and then transplanted again. These are peas which I'm going to pick for shoots. So look at that, just about ready actually. There's a lovely little pea shoot. That's Oregon Sugar Pod, which obviously would make a lovely sweet pod. Uh, but he, you know, dual purpose, actually not dual purpose, because if we keep picking the shoots like that, we don't really get many pods. But the harvest I want is this early pea flavor from the pea shoot. And here's a weed. <laughs> it's like wow you know this is no dig these well as you know there are one or two there so i've not weeded here since planting these radish and onions here oh look a dandelion so you see there's a dandelion look how easily it pulls out from the compost mulch so you know that's the thing don't be afraid of weeds you'll get a few you've just got to keep pulling them keep your eye out if there were going to be more, I would have taken this leaf up, but you can see it's not very many. So that's a whole three weeks now without doing any weeding, and that's all that's happened there. And um, just to mention on that, there's more multi sown radish there. Some of the trees have some carrots just coming up. There's a few new plantings like um, sorrel and dill. There's some broadleaf sorrel I quite like. And spinach, the spinach which has overwintered. It's just been amazing. And the interesting thing about this overwintered spinach is you get some of these going a bit yellow, pale. We find those are the sweetest. They, we still have cold nights. We had a frost here three nights ago. And when the plants put antifreeze sugar. <laughs> the more sugar in the leaves makes them resist frost better. So when you have cold nights in spring, your spinach and kale and things can get sweeter. I did a bricks test on three of these leaves actually, um, just two nights ago to see Brick's test is measuring sugar by refraction of light, and I've got a reading of six, which is not super high, but it's equivalent to, it's sweeter actually than a normal tomato, just to give you an idea. So for spinach, that's really good. Uh, I suppose I just mentioned the whole plant there, which is 
perennial kale, Swanton bean. I'm afraid to say that you can't grow it from seed. If you know someone who's got a plant, you can raise it from little stems that grow on, new stems on each old stem. Uh, once you've got it, you need to look after it and then spread the joy uh, <laughs> give some around. I, I look forward to doing courses again here. We can't at the moment because of lockdown. Um, I'll be giving some of those away. I'm going to raise some plants because it, it's a great standby for all seasons um, having food. And I hope you've enjoyed this little small garden film, which is being filmed by Steph, Stephanie Hafferty. <coughs> you can follow her on Instagram as well. And she's putting up videos. Uh, so this is small garden at home because no big, no more food.